Hey everybody, Michael Rosso here, Film Photography Project. My friend John Fidelli is behind the camera today. And today I'm talking about an 8mm home movie camera. It's called the Revere 8 Model 80. And what's great about the Revere 8 Model 80 is everything. Check it out. This is a quick overview of the camera. It does not take the place of a manual, but... I think we'll get through how to use it really fast. First of all, it takes regular 8mm film, which is the roll type film. 8mm film comes in a 25 foot roll. It's actually 16mm in width, and you load it into your camera. You shoot through 25 feet, then you take the shot side, you flip it, and then shoot the other side. No, for real. No kidding. I'm going to show you how to load it in a second. On this side of the camera, very simple. You have your frame rate. How many frames per second? The norm for a regular 8mm is 16 frames per second. But on this particular camera, it's variable. So if you want to shoot 24 frames per second, you can do that as well. What's the difference? Well, 24 frames per second is the norm for when you record sound. But since you're recording silent, the recommendation is 16 frames per second, in which your shutter will be 1 30th of a second. Next to that is your frame counter. I think you put it right there. Right there. Zero. You start at zero. And then this is your wind. Ah. This is your wind. And here's your motor. Here's your eyepiece. Look through there like that. Motor. And here's your lens. Now these lenses, these are D-mount lenses. I know what you're saying. What? Yeah, you know, when people say oh, I did a lot of research, I mean, the research I did is just as you could do the same research. All I do is go to Google. The Google. And Google. just start typing away. Like, what is this lens? And all it says on the lens is it says Wollensack half inch F2.5 Cine Raptor lens. Uh, what? <laughs> I want to know, like, what... No, I'm serious. I, I just want to know what millimeter lens is because here on the top of the camera, it says 9, 13, 25, or 38, and that's what type, what millimeter of lens you have on your camera. So I had to do research to see what millimeter lens this is. As it turns out, as by my cheat sheet, it's a 13 millimeter lens, and I found that out by searching half-inch woolen sack... Cine Raptor lens in Google, and I searched, 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 and I searched. Finally, I'm like, okay, it's a 13 millimeter lens, which is a standard lens for this camera. However, for me personally, I like it wider. And the great thing about this camera is, well, first of all, these are not reflex cameras. A reflex camera means you're actually looking through the lens. These are known as parallax cameras, meaning you're looking through an eyepiece, but you're not looking through the lens. So if you shot with your lens cap on, you, <laughs> you would still be able to see through the eyepiece, but you would be shooting nothing. So you have to be really careful about that. So I went on eBay. Once I established that these are known as D-mount lenses, you will find a large variety of lenses. And... Most of these cameras, like this camera or this Revere, this is the Model 88. Remember this guy, right? Mm -hmm. They take the same mount, and the lenses just oh. screw out. So I went on the bay, and I found this. <laughs> John, will you marry me? <laughs> yes. So I, this is what I got. This is a 9 millimeter wider lens. And this one actually says 9 millimeter wide angle cine raptor lens. So what I love about this model camera is that you have a slider here that allows you this whatever lens you have on. Now I have the 9 millimeter lens on. I just put it to 9 millimeter. So now that's what I see through my eyepiece, which is wonderful. The normal lens for this camera is the 13 millimeter lens, which is much smaller. And in most cases will do. There's f-stops on this lens, 
all the way from F2.5 to F22. You will have to get a light meter, a light meter app for your phone, or a handheld light meter using one thirtieth of a second if you're shooting at 16 frames per second. Are you following all this? I don't know. Too complicated, right? Use your light meter, and that'll give you your f-stop. And once you start shooting regularly, you'll know in bright sun what your f-stop's going to be. It's always going to be the same. I've noticed that using 100-speed film of the Foma Pan 100 ISO film, if I go outside, f22. If I'm inside, open up all the way. It's that simple. I took this camera to the Baltimore Zoo, and when you shoot 8mm film, you shoot one side and then flip it and shoot the other side. And so I'm going to load this right now. And then while I was at the zoo, I, I shot through side one. And right then and there, uh, what you'll see, uh, I reloaded the film right there at the zoo. These film comes on what's called daylight spools, which means you can load the film in dim light. If you're outside at a family event, just find yourself a nice tree. <laughs> Sit under the tree. Okay, so when you're loading the camera, it's very simple. And each camera is a little bit different. This camera has a little hinge where you open your gate. Here's the hinge. See that? Now you, look at that. Now your gate's open. So now you take your film, like so, and you just follow the arrows. You take your film. This is This is the shiny base side of the film. This is the not so shiny emulsion or light sensitive part of the film. This part has to face the lens. So follow the guide. Make sure you block out some time to do this first time uh, so that you don't get the film sweats. See, so I just put it in there. Easy peasy, because this was designed for parents to do. Give yourself enough thing in my jig. Close the gate. Here's the gate here. Nice. And then here's your take up. The arrows go this way, so you will put it on the take-up spool, like so. Oh, look at that. And now you could run the motor. Let's see. Oh! Sweet. Close your door. And now you're locked and loaded, ready to shoot. So really fast. What do we got to worry about? You have to wind your camera. I usually do it like 10, 12 times. I'm always afraid I'm going to break it. There's a spring in there. But it's probably not going to break. I set my thingamajig to zero, which I did already. I'm shooting at 16 frames per second. I have the 13 millimeter standard lens, so I make sure my on my eyepiece it's at 13. It's, this is easy to mess up. It's at 13. You look through your eyepiece, and now you're recording. I shot a roll on this. Let's take a look at the roll. In the middle of the roll, when the first 25 feet is up, I'm going to change the roll. Okay, we just shot one side of a roll of 8mm film. I'm here at the Maryland Zoo, and now it's time for me to flip it over. And what I'm going to do is simply take the spent cartridge and put it in the take-up here. Well, we'll put that there for now. 
I take my film and I flip it like so. Put it here. And now I feed, I try not to get my big beefy fingers in the way. I feed the film through the gate like so. Close the gate. Make sure you have enough enough film to put on your take-up spool. And now I'm going to take the take-up spool, film in it, there it goes, put it on here, great. Now do a quick test while it's still open. Perfect. So now I close it up. Go to the counter, set the counter to zero. And now I'm ready to shoot the second side of the film. Thank you. If you have any questions, Michael at FilmPhotographyProject.com. I'm always here to uh, chit-chat with you on the interwebs about film. See you next time.